Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Hive 2. This is video 13, and this is the second part of the shape sequencer. So let's go to a new preset here. And in the last video, we kind of talked about the time base, the trigger, the loop orders and stuff like that. Although there's some extra things we do need to discuss, especially here in the matrix where if we right click here under the shape sequencer, we have a whole list here that we have to cover. So let's grab the shape sequence A and bring this onto the cutoff. We Reduce our cutoff just a little bit like that and give it some depth. And let's look at the shape A in the scope. So we have something like that. Now for the shape A, we have these two spots here selected, so one and two. So for now, let's just remove the second one so we just have a saw wave and let's click the saw wave to take a look at this. Okay, so if we go down here to the matrix and right click here and go to shape sequencer, the first thing we have is rate A. So if we select rate A and let's select for the modulation source or what we're going to be using to modulate this with, let's select the mod wheel and drag it down over here. Let's turn this depth knob all the way to the left and let's take a look and let's see what happens. So we have this basic shape here. And as we bring up our mod wheel, it's going to be significantly slower. And down on the bottom, it's going to be significantly faster. So we're basically modulating the rate of how fast the shape sequencer is moving. So if we went back to the matrix and turn this the other way. Now bringing the mod wheel up is going to make it go really fast. So that one's generally pretty easy to understand here. So we have the rate for... A, B, C, and D, and that goes for all these shapes here, A, B, C, and D. So we don't need to cover B, C, and D in this case because it just does the same thing with the different shapes. So moving on from here, the next thing that we need to talk about is this left value A. So for this case, let's go back to a new preset to start fresh scan, drag, drag shape A to the cutoff and do the same thing and give us some depth here like that. So we have something like this. Okay, so basically we go to this list and we go to shape sequencer and then we see this left value in the parentheses is going to be A. So basically what this is telling us is that we are going to be modulating the left value of A. So if we go to this first shape and this little left flag here is basically like we're going to be modulating this moving up and down and up and down and so on and so forth. So if we want to kind of simulate that, let's grab the mod wheel again and drag it here where it says none. And let's turn this to the left and let's take a listen. It's acting as normal. And it's almost barely moving at that spot. So at that rate, we're kind of just going, just moving it up and down and up and down like that. So now that that's covered, it gets a little bit more involved here because now we have a couple other things. We have right value for B, and that's going to be basically using the shape B. So this next one down over here, if we put the spot over here, and then we actually took this off the uh, cutoff here. Just double click this and remove the depth and do the same thing with B and kind of add that here. And then instead of doing shape sequence left value A, we click this and change this to right value B. And then on the B, it's going to be moving basically this up and down and up and down. And so on and so forth. So it's going to get a little bit confusing. So take a deep breath. We have curve, which is basically when we're clicking and dragging, kind of changing this tension. It's going to be modulating this type of movement. And then the last one here is going to be the ratchet, which is going to be when we move our scroll wheel up here and kind of increase the shapes that we have here. So now that that all makes sense, that's going to be the stuff that we're modulating, right? So the left side is going to be this, the right side is going to be that, the curve is going to be this tension on the shapes here, and then the ratchet is going to be the last one. So back to a new preset, here's where it kind of gets strange. So in the manual, they did have to simplify things a little bit. So there's not a th all these crazy targets and modulations stuff going on. So there was some compromises that had to be made. So if we go back here to the shape sequencer, for example, and let's say we want to modulate this curve here. And let's say we do this with our mod wheel again, right? And kind of just maybe increase this depth here, something like that. And let's grab shape A onto the cutoff, something kind of like this and give it some depth. So now nothing should generally be happening, right? Because we're doing the mod wheel with the curve C, which is going to be this line right over here. And we're not really using that right now. So it's functioning just as it normally would. However, once we add C in here and we change our mod, now this is gonna be useful to look in the scope. So let's change it here to the scope and let's grab shape A over here and kind of look and see what's happening. 
So let's freeze this here. So what exactly is happening? So we saw initially before that it was basically just a straight saw wave, but now we see this curve here. So what's actually happening is that we have this first one here, this first saw wave going down. And if we take this off real quick and kind of look at this again and unfreeze it, we have our regular shape that we're kind of accustomed to what's what makes sense, right? This is going to be the shape sequence H It's going to be that saw going down, 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 so on and so forth. Now to basically turn on and off these different modulation things, we have these lanes almost as on off switches. So in the matrix, we're modulating this curve, which is actually on C and using the mod wheel, right? So we have the mod wheel up. So now we're saying there is going to be modulation going on. Now to turn this on, if we're using shape A, we have to trigger it with C because as we see here, this is going to be on curve C. So if we play something and on freezes here, this has the correct shape. Now, if I select C here, this is basically telling this first step A to also modulate and also apply the curve setting, which it is doing here as so we can see it and we can hear it. So now it's an on off. The first one is saying, okay, now if C is on and it's underneath A, that means, okay, for this step, we apply that modulation that we have done with this curve. Now this one here is off, so it says, okay, so it's off, there's no C step underneath the second A, and we are using the second step for the A, A shape, but we don't have the C here, so don't apply that modulation. As soon as I click this though, then we're gonna have two curves and this spiky wave right here is gonna go away. So I select this here, and then now it's basically gonna be just curves. Just like that, and we could turn this off like that, and then we have one and the other, and we can disable that completely by turning off the first one. Now we're back originally to our shape. So that's kind of the confusing part to wrap your brain around. The main kind of takeaway is that whatever we want to modulate, so in this list here of shape sequencer, we have the left, right, curve, and ratchet, right? The left is going to be that left flag, the right is going to be the right hand flag, that blue flag, and then we have the curve, which is the tension, what we were, what we were just looking at, and then we have the ratchet, which is basically scrolling on our mouse wheel. So in the situation where let's say we want to modulate this ratchet with our with our uh, mod wheel, but we only want it on one step and the main sequence that's going with the shape is going to be an A. So we just would have to add this D wherever we would like that modulation to apply. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, please let me know. I'll try to explain that a little bit better. It's one of those ones that's kind of tricky and you kind of have to play with it a little bit to, to get that aha moment. But once you do, you're going to be like, okay, this wasn't so crazy. So with that being said, there's a couple more things we have to discuss. So in this matrix here, we have shape sequencer. Now we have position A, B, C, and D. And now this is where this shape here in the order comes in for the time base for HALT. So we'll click this here and we'll drag shape to the cutoff as we normally do. Something like this. And if we drag, <clears throat> drag this to the scope here, we can see it's not really doing anything. It's basically stopped. So what's what's this is basi basically doing, it's allowing us to use another external source to modulate in between these shapes. So let's take off B, C, and all these other ones and just look at this first A here and let's give it some more of these steps here. So now we have four of these same steps. And if we press some, press some notes, nothing's really moving. So what we can do is say, okay, we want to move this, but on our own terms. So let's right click this none and let's go to the shape sequencer and let's go to position A because we're gonna be using the A lane, right? So now we are saying, okay, now we can move between these how we want to. So what's gonna be a modulator that we're gonna to use to move in between these? So for this case, let's use an LFO. Let's change this to saw up here and increase the polarity, click the polarity. So we're just going upwards and let's drag this LFO to this right over here. And let's play some notes and give it some depth. Okay, so now this is going really fast. So let's kind of bring this down a little bit to maybe like one over two. So basically at this rate, this saw wave that's moving upwards is basically just scrolling through this shape over here. That's kind of the functionality of it. And we can use different shapes. So let's say for example, we used a random hold or something like that. So now we're basically modulating this with a random, which we can do in different ways, but I kind of just wanted to show you that this modulation, this LFO shape is basically moving its way through this. And there's cool things that we can do as well. So let's say we do a sine wave or something like that. And we can really increase the rate if we want to. So like 0.1 and increase this rate. 
and make some cool modulation shapes. And then in further, we can always change these shapes as well and kind of do some weird things like that. And if we slow this down enough, you can kind of see the sine wave shape is kind of just going back and forth and back and forth. So very cool. And you can also use the modulation for something else. You can use an envelope or really whatever you want to use to modulate that with. You can even use another shape or whatever it is you want to use. But it's definitely a cool concept. And that's kind of why we needed a little extra video to talk about these things. Because they're a little bit more involved as far as the main usage, usage of that here. So looking back at this list, this should now hopefully make all sense now and open up some creative possibilities. So hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.